We have been looking at rates of change, applications of calculus to the physical world, and most recently, we've been in motion land. Right? We've been trying to think about what were those three quantities that in the context of kinematics tell us everything we need to know about how something's moving. What are the three things? Starts with a D. Displacement. Displacement. Velocity. Take a seat. Velocity. Acceleration. Acceleration. Very good. So we understand each of these things, right? And we have learned that if you have, you, you don't have to write this down. If you define your displacement as x, all velocity is, is how that is changing with respect to time. And all acceleration is, is how that is changing with respect to time. Okay? Now, we have been learning uh, about rates of change and we've been using differentiation and the gradient function for so long that this kind of just makes sense to us. Okay? When you have a look at this graph, <laughs> And if you picture, have I got everything there? I think I do. If you picture a point on the graph and its tangent, the gradient of that tangent, right? Um, we understand that if you think about this point, and let's put the actual point on there, okay? If this is a displacement function, right? And this is its gradient, its velocity function, right? Then, the gradient at any point on the displacement curve is simply this value down here, right? That's the velocity function, right? So you can see, all right, over here, what's the gradient of the displacement curve? It's negative. Of course it's negative because there's your velocity. And right, I missed. Right there, well, you're pretty close, right? Of course, here you're going to get a tangent which is horizontal. It has a gradient of zero, which corresponds to a velocity of zero. So this is not too dramatic. Okay, we understand this. This makes sense. How quickly, how steep this is rather, is how quickly it's moving. Fine. But if you know about differentiation, right, well we know a lot more about calculus than just differentiation. This is one half the picture, right? Logic dictates that I should therefore not just be able to go in this dire direction by differentiating, but if calculus is doing its thing, I should go in this direction by integrating. Now, that's what we're going to be looking at today, integrating with respect to time. But you need to sort of catch, this is a weird idea. You can think about um, just the calculus of it, just the functions that you get. You differentiate down, you integrate up, you'll get a constant, you evaluate that with initial conditions or whatever conditions you happen to have. But there's something unsettling about this. There's something a little bit weird. We, we understood about derivatives as gradient because that's, that's where we came from. We were having the limiting behavior of a secret which became a tangent. But integration, the idea of integration came from solving a very different problem. What problem were we trying to solve? We were trying to find areas under curves. Areas under curves? Now, if therefore, going, climbing up this ladder is integrating, which is finding areas under curves, that means that an area underneath the velocity curve, for instance, corresponds to, corresponds to what? Let me show you a picture, okay? Here is, um, oh, that's, I didn't need that. Uh, here is an area under the curve, okay? Let me move over a little bit, okay? There's an area underneath the velocity curve, okay? Now, what does it mean? What does it actually signify? We'll come back to this in a second, okay? So for now, I need to do some drawing. To understand what's going on, I need a somewhat simpler case, okay? So what I want you to do is simply imagine um, a man, he's, let's, let's go Forrest Gump, okay? He's jogging, he's going 10 k's an hour, okay? He's just going and going and going. He starts from, I don't know, I'm just gonna pick a number, but he starts 10, 20 kilometers away from home and he just runs just on and on and on, away from his home, okay? What is the displacement graph of Forrest Gump? Let's draw just the, um, just the positive time axis. What is the displacement graph of Forrest Gump gonna look like? Okay, because it's constant, right, the displacement is just gonna get further and further and further away. Can we draw this? Can we draw this? Uh, I said, okay, let's start 20 kilometers away from home because um, why not? He starts 20 kilometers away from him, and then he starts running. He starts running. 
doesn't speed up, doesn't slow down, just does his forest gun thing and keeps on going. Okay? I said to you that he went 10 kilometers per hour. So I can actually put some um, points on here, right? So I can get a sense of scale. If I said that's uh, 20, that means that's 10. So for example, if I went the same distance, there's 30 and 40. Where did these correspond to on the time axis? If he's running at 10 kilometers per hour. One hour to get to 30 kilometers away. Two hours to get to 40 kilometers away. So let me just put those guys on. One. Two. Okay, so here is our time displacement graph. Okay. I'm using this example because it's very, very simple. Let's think about the velocity graph that goes with this, that comes along for the ride. We'll, um, we'll draw it over here. Okay. The velocity graph is very simple. Let's draw the same kind of scale. Again, I've got time, but this time I'm going to call this V. You could call it dx under t if you like. Same deal. I've got a zero and a zero here. Okay, so what do I know about this velocity graph? It's flat. It's, flat. it's a constant, right? Because it doesn't speed up, doesn't slow down. He's not experiencing any acceleration of any kind. Okay, so therefore, if I try and keep the same scale, this is the velocity graph. Yeah, it's really, really simple. Now, what I want to do in trying to work out what on earth this integration area business has to do with these. I just want to think about particular areas under curves. For instance, I've got time one, one hour, two hours. Let's put those guys on as well. If, for instance, I integrated from one to two underneath the velocity graph, right, I would get this area. Okay? Now, how would I actually write this? This is just an integral, right? An integral from 1 to 2. In this case, the function I'm integrating is 10. It's just 10. It's always 10. 10 with respect to time. Do you agree? Now, I, I'm going to integrate this in a second, but I don't actually even need integration for this. This is why I chose such a simple example. What kind of area is this here? It's just a rectangle. It's just a rectangle. What's the, um, what are the dimensions of this rectangle? You've got a horizontal dimension and you've got a vertical dimension, right? So you've got 1 times 10, yes? So you have a number in your head now. Let's just verify that. What's going to happen here? What's the um, integral? This is 10t, right? Or you could have taken that 10 out and just have t. I'm integrating from 1 to 2. So this is going to be... 20 minus 10, which sure enough is that 10 that you were telling me about a second ago. Okay. Now, hold on, hold on. Here's where it becomes important. Okay. This 10, what does it correspond to on our original diagram, on our displacement one? Yeah. Okay, so it's the total displacement between when I was, well, when Forrest Cut was, 30 kilometers away from home and 40 kilometers away from home. So in other words, it's this distance, it's this total displacement that's been calculated, okay? 